stand for Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Well, good afternoon. It's great to be here at WTJR again to share the Word of God with you. I'm Pastor Matthew Yoder from Living Vine Community Church and Ministries. We, uh, uh, again, are just honored to be here to share the Word of God with you. I believe the Lord uh, gave me a word for today for someone as I was praying uh, this last couple of nights and uh, I've entitled it uh, Messiah Revealed. Sometimes I think we have a uh, real misunderstanding about who Messiah is and about faith in general. And I do believe we have a misunderstanding about faith in the church today. Uh, you know, we, we seem to think that faith is something we must uh, gain ourselves or, or find within ourselves, uh, something we must uh, almost get out of our own, own body, our own, our own mind. Uh, but you know, the Word of God uh, tells us something different. If you turn with me to Galatians chapter 2, and you know, as, as, as I was studying this, I thought of my first moment knowing Christ, knowing who He was, uh, when I first gave my heart to Him, when I first believed in Him. And you know, I had an immediate faith that was right there. I had a faith in Christ. Uh, that's what moves us to tears. That's what moves us to repentance. That's, that's why we feel the way we do when, when we first meet Christ. There's a faith that comes from just knowing Him. And we'll get into that faith, but right now I want to look at Galatians 2. We're in uh, chapter 2, verse number 16. It says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. For I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain." Let's look at that, verse number 16 again. He said, he said, we are not justified by the works of the law. We know there's nothing we can do in the works, uh, in our own works, that can justify us. But it's by the faith, and, and, and there's a little word here that I believe is of great importance. It's by the faith of Jesus Christ. Not the faith in Christ. Uh, he said, by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus when we believe in Jesus, that's why that first moment when you're, when you're uh, introduced to Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's why you have the measure of faith that comes to you instantly. That's what makes you realize you're safe. You're in His hands. And so we got to realize that we're operating as believers on His faith. It's by the faith of Jesus Christ. I, I want to jump over to uh, Romans Chapter 5 and verse 1. We'll be in Romans quite a bit today. Romans 5 and 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. And, and there's a word there, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he said, nobody comes unto the Father except through the Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, the only way we'll find the peace with God is going through Christ. When we believe in Christ, we have the faith of Christ. Also, 
uh, going into verse 2, it says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejo rejoice in hope of glory of God. So then, jump over with me just a few chapters to Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. <clears throat> For I say... Through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. That's the measure of faith. See, if it was something that I had within me, we'd all have a measure of faith, and it would be a different measure of faith for each person. But he said, I've dealt to every man the measure of faith. What measure is it? It's the faith of Jesus Christ. It's the faith of Messiah. Uh, as he sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us, we can pull on his faith. And I can tell you, he does not doubt when he's making intercession for you and for me, he does not doubt his work on the cross. Therefore, we've got to get into the mindset that we're operating on his faith and not doubt his work on the cross, which many of us do on a daily basis. We, we, we begin to think, oh, can I be healed or can I be uh, saved? Am I, am I too far gone? Am I, can God even save a wreck like me? See, if we, if we meet Christ and we have the faith of Christ, we're not going to doubt His faith. We're not going to doubt that work on the cross. And finally, in Romans chapter 8, and verse 33, Paul went into great detail about the faith. But Romans 8, 33, he says, He says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Now, now, I want to point something out here. Didn't we just read back in Galatians 2, he said, uh, we, we are justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. But then he says this, he said, It is God that justifieth, in Romans 8, 33. And 34, he says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen. Again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And, of course, he goes on a little bit uh, talking about what shall separate us from the love of Christ, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. He goes on to say, none of these things can separate me from the love of Christ. Why? Because he's at the right hand of God making intercession, and his work at Calvary is complete. So jump over with me. This is really where this word began to the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4. It's a very familiar verse. We, we use this verse uh, at, at celebration of lives, funerals. Uh, we use this to comfort, and we're supposed to use this for comfort. It's a very familiar passage. But in First Thessalonians 4, chapter 14, he says this, he says, If we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Verse 16 caught me a while back. And it said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. That is uh, translated Jehovah himself. Or rather, if you go to the, to the Jewish text, that word would be Yah. For Yah himself, well, that is God himself. That's the King of glory himself, the Creator himself, shall return or shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. You see, I think, what I, what I see, when I picture the scripture, 
Remember, Jesus is seated right now at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for the saints. For those of us who believe in Christ, he's making intercession for us. But there's coming a time, and it's talking about that time here in 1 Thessalonians, that he's going to return to earth to take his bride away. Uh, we know that as the rapture, uh, the second coming of Christ. And so when he comes to take his bride away, uh, I've heard uh, another brother in the faith, he talked about he might have come the first time as a lamb to the slaughter, but he's not coming back as a lamb the second time around. He's coming back as God himself. He's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming back as, as the king of glory, the king of kings, the lord of lords, uh, coming back to judge the world. He's not coming back in meekness as the Son of Man like he did the first time. No, he's coming back as God himself. And I, I see, as I picture this, I see there comes this time of the rapture when Jesus himself stands up from his place at the right hand of God. And, and, and you, you read in Revelation where, where the Holy Spirit begins to withdraw himself from the earth. I believe the three, which I, I, the Trinity is, is there. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I believe the three will come back as one. See, Jesus will stand up uh, from his place at the right hand of God, and he will then take his rightful place back in God, in the Father, in glory, and he will, he, he will then descend to earth to bring his bride home, to take his bride off this earth. In fact, if you think about this, when, once the rapture comes, we don't need the intercessor anymore. We're not going to be fighting that old devil, that adversary that we have anymore. We don't have to fight him anymore because he's coming back to judge the earth. He's coming back to destroy Satan's kingdom. He's coming back as the king of glory. And we don't need him interceding anymore. And this is, when, this is where the message title came from. This is when he reveals himself to his people. He is the Father. In fact, why don't we turn over to Revelations chapter 1. Uh, I, I, just a few passages of Scripture to give you some reference to this. Revelations 1 and verse 8. Uh, and this is the revelation of Jesus Christ that was given to John. It says, I am Alpha and Omega, verse number 8. The beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come. Uh, that's a very interesting scripture there. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, which is, that is currently the Father, and which was, that is the Son of Man who came on this earth, was crucified, died, and rose again, and which is to come, and then he even says it, the Almighty. The, the one to come is God himself. And so, then if you jump down to Revelations 1 and 12, just a few verses, he says, and I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks are like unto the Son of Man. L listen to that. He's like unto the Son of Man, this is Jesus, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt of the paps, and with a, with a golden girdle. His head, his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet like undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice was as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me. I'm going to just stop right there. This kind of blows that whole little image we have of, of, of the gentle Jesus coming down from, from, from heaven to, re, to, to receive his bride. It says he has a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. His feet are like brass, <laughs> as if they were burned in a furnace. His eyes were like flames of fire. 
You know, this, this puts a whole new image on who Messiah is. Messiah is the Father. In fact, if you turn with me to John chapter 14, John is, he does such a wonderful job of, uh, Jesus himself actually did such a wonderful job of telling them who he was, but John did a great job of recording these words. John chapter 14, verse number 7, it says, I actually I want to back up a little bit. Let's just start in chapter one, uh, 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may also be. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas then saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And then this verse, number 6, says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And verse 7 really explains who Jesus is. He says, If you had known me, you should have known my Father. Also, and from henceforth, from now on, you know him and have seen him. Why would Jesus say that? Because Jesus is essentially here saying, I am the Father. I may be the Son of Man on this earth, but I am in the Father and the Father is in me. He says that in another place. And I am the Father. And if you knew me, then you should know the Father. He actually also went on to say that I only do the will of the Father. Whatever he, he wants me to do, I do. Uh, the, the whole mystery of the Trinity, the three in one. And then, if you would turn, with, uh, just go down a few verses here. Verse number 21. Well, I, I, let, again, let's start in 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Catch that. It seeth him not. Uh, I, I, that is actually translated, uh, the world cannot receive because it doesn't really know, it, it is not revealed to them who he is. Neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you. Uh, there's the Holy Spirit. He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me because I live. Ye shall live also. Verse 20. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. In other words, Jesus saying, in that day you'll know that we're one. And you dwell in me. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. And verse 21, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I love this last line, uh, and I will love him, and will, what? I will manifest myself to him. In other words, if you love the Lord, if you're following the Lord, He's saying, there's coming a day, that's, that's, that's a, uh, we can have Him revealed now, but in that last day, we'll see Him for the King of glory that He is. We'll see Him for the Lord of Lords that He is. You know, I, I think when we look at these passages, we begin to pray just a little differently. I know when I realized, uh, it's easy to say, oh, there's three in one. But to know they're three in one. To know that, that, that God was, was three entities or, or, or three parts because we needed a Messiah to come and be the sacrifice. We, could not, <laughs> we couldn't slaughter enough animals to give enough sacrifice to atone for our sins anymore. We needed that Messiah to come on this earth and God gladly gave him as his son. But then to realize that that son, when he rises up from, from his place of intercession, 
and joins himself again to the Father and is the Father. Oh my. I began to pray differently. I, instead of doubting, God, do you hear the prayer? Come on. If Jesus is making intercession for me at the right hand of the Father and he is the Father and the Father's in him and he's in the Father, don't you think that our prayers are reaching the throne of God? I began to stop doubting that my prayers found the Father. I began to stop doubting that he would answer those prayers. Everything that God said from Genesis to Revelation, it's faithful, it's true. In fact, it called him faithful and true. Everything that I pray in his name, in Christ's name, it says he will do. When we're praying for healing, when we're praying for uh, loved ones who don't know the Lord, we need to stop thinking that it's our faith, some small measure of faith that we manage to find within ourselves. No, it's his faith that he gave us as the measure of faith. And if we've got his faith, that, that words it shall come to pass mean a little bit more. This is not, this is not me and my, my imagination coming up with this. No, it's God saying, I'm joining my faith with your faith. I'm giving you the measure of faith. And together, we're going we're gonna to get this thing done. If you're sick, if you're, if you're fighting some kind of disease, we don't have to doubt that, that he is the healer and that he took our disease according to 1 Peter 2.24 and Isaiah 53.5 because it's his faith and it's his word and it's his stripes. It's, I've done nothing. Oh, I've prayed the prayer. And I've believed in him. But it's, it's, it's his faith. If you're, if you're listening to this and you don't know the Lord, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, know this, that if you would just accept Jesus Christ, the God that we serve, the very creator of the universe, wants to reveal himself to you and, and, and show you his love to you that you also could pray a prayer of faith and receive him. You're receiving the very life of God into you. And I encourage you to pray that prayer and to, to uh, accept Christ as your Savior. And I also encourage you to call the station here and let them know because they need to know that, that, things are, uh, that, that, that what they're doing is making a difference. It's the, it's the king of glory. We don't have to pray thinking God hates us. Thinking that maybe he doesn't hear us. So I encourage you today to start thinking in terms of it's his faith. We're not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Because we believed in Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you've given me this word and that you've revealed yourself as you said in your word you, that you would do, that you've revealed or manifested yourself to us. Father, I thank you that there are those listening who have been fighting sickness and disease, Father God, that, uh, that, that they just wonder, God, do you even hear me? And Father God, I just, I just pray a prayer for them right now and with them right now. Father God, that you would join your faith with theirs, Father God, that they would no longer doubt that you hear that prayer. Father God, that they would see physical manifested healing in their bodies, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, those that are racked with pain, those that are battling cancer, those that are, 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 are fighting any, any other form of disease, Father God, we just ask right now that your healing power would come upon them, but that you would join your faith with theirs, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, that you would show them and reveal to them that you will be the rewarder of those that diligently seek them. It's not a maybe, it's a, it's a will. Father God, if, if there's anyone there that is listening out there today, Father, that 
do not know you and, and they're, they're sitting here saying I'd really like to know the creator of the universe I'd really like to know the one who formed me in my mother's womb you can know that man and I father I just ask that you would reveal them yourself to them right now in the name of Jesus father God that they would that they would uh, know you in a personal way father that they would that they would just cry and all, all you have to do is just cry out and say Father forgive me I believe in you I know that you died for me that you rose again and I profess you as my Lord and Savior that's all you have to do and Father I'm asking that you would just tug on those heartstrings a little bit more Father God that they would begin to know the creator of the universe Father, we thank you for this. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. And Father, we say everything is yes and amen according to your word. We thank you for your revelation of yourself. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, if you, if you, even if you haven't yet and you're just contemplating, I encourage you. And I, I, I just ask you to pray that prayer. And call this station and let them know. And there, there will be people here that can pray with you. And that will gladly spend their time with you and walk you through that. They will hook you up with a good church. And I just encourage you to know that the creator of the universe sent his son Jesus Christ, which also was him, the creator of the universe, was willing to be crucified on a cross for you. He loves you. He's for you and not against you. God bless. Thank you. And sweet is the way he can.